Hi, I'd like to introduce myself. I am the Canadian Bear, and beside me is Dr. James Popham. We are going to discuss reliability, validity, and bias. Reliability in assessment means the ability to be consistent. If this was a target that an archer was firing at, he fired three consecutive arrows and it hit the same general area, we would say not only was the archer consistent, but in assessment, we would say there is reliability in this. Now that we know what reliability is, Dr. Popham has identified three types of reliability. The first type of reliability is called stability. Another name for this is test-retest. In this type of reliability, the student writes this assessment at one particular period of time and then in a future period of time writes the same assessment again. If the scores are relatively the same, we could say there is stability or test-retest reliability. The next one Popham identifies is called alternate form. What an alternate form is, is when you have the same material but it's covered in two different assessments. The assumption being that if the student scores one score in the first assessment, the student should also be able to score the same in the next assessment. Then we would have alternate form reliability. The next one that we looked at is called internal consistencies. Here we only have the one assessment, but we're looking internal to see if the items themselves are consistent and the score is reflective of that. Now, some people would say, oh, you have three types of reliability. They must all be the same. This is totally false. Each of those three reliabilities stand on their own. And because something is an alternate form does not mean it is, has internal consistency, nor does it have stability reliability. Some people would say, great, you have reliability, but can you statistically prove it? Well, yes, you can. For the instances of stability and alternate form reliability, there's two methods. The first one is called the correlational coefficient, which produces a number that has a numerical value between 1 and negative 1. The higher the number, the greater the correlational coefficient is said to be. The next one is called classification or consistency approach. This takes a look at students who have mastered the material over a period of time and those who still need work on it. Comparing those comes up with a, a number which then gives you a classification or consistency approach. Now for internal consistency there's actually two statistical methods of checking it. One is the Cooter Richardson or KR and is usually mostly used for people who are testing things on multiple choice items. Whereas the Cronbach's coefficient alpha is better on subjective items. Sometimes you maybe have heard this term being used as well, standard error of measurement. For an example, let's say the bear down there does an exam four times. Why? That's debatable. But he does the exam four times and gets four distinct marks. We can see that the marks are close, we could say there's reliability, but the scores are all different. So standard error of measurement would say this, the score for this particular bear is 90% plus or minus a 2% margin of error. Now that we know a little bit about reliability, let's take a look at the second concept called validity. Now validity is very important because test validity is a concept that is constantly evolving in the field of psychometrics. And it is the degree to which the test measures what it was designed to measure. So in reality, we're not looking at the test itself, we're taking a look at what the test predicts. Poppin has identified three types of validity. The first one he identified is called content validity. This is the extent to which an assessment procedure adequately represents the content of the curricular aims being measured. The next one is criterion validity. This is the degree to which a performance on an assessment procedure accurately predicts a student's performance on an external criteria. This is predictive in nature. So that's how we get the name, predictive validity. Lastly, we have something called construct validity. 
This is the extent to which empirical evidence confirms that an infirm construct exists, and given an assessment procedure is measuring that inferred construct accurately. Lastly, there is a relationship between assessment and reliability. This is what that would look like. The third thing I'd like to talk about is the notion of bias. Bias can either give someone an advantage or give someone a disadvantage. This could be based on the student's race, gender, economic position, physical or mental abilities. We must constantly be checking for bias that might occur in the various items on an assessment. How do we do that? Two approaches. One is a judgmental approach where you use your fellow peers or bring in experts in the area to determine and look for bias on an item by item basis. Secondly is an empirical approach. This is the more expensive of the two approaches and it requires a large number of assessments to be written because it looks for empirical evidence based on item analysis to determine bias. As educators, we want all our assessments to be valid, reliable, and bias-free. And in doing that, we can actually take pride in our work knowing that all our assessments are right on target. And why do we want to do that? Well, let's take a look. Thank you for watching this presentation as we discuss the concepts that are very important for every educator, that being the concept of reliability, validity, and bias.